There's a lot of good things that are happening in manufacturing now. There are so many different companies that are coming into Pittsburgh, and they have all of these different kinds of technology that no one's really had any training for. If you ask 100 employers uh, what the hardest thing to do, it's finding and recruiting those employees with manufacturing skills. Career in manufacturing is very different today than what it used to be. It's not just the hardware training, I'm going to be a CNC operator, I'm going to stand in front of the machine, but what does it take to actually be part of a team? In a nascent industry, it's more likely that you will have startups. It's important to have access to a workforce that is pre-trained, pre-selected, and it's, and it's available. If you think about the maker learning programs, these are opportunities for our young people to learn these skills and put them into practice. Manufacturing is making. That's all that it's about. It's an amazing connection. I like making things. It's something that I've always liked doing. It kind of gives you an accomplishment, like, you know, hey, I built this thing. It's the fluid power challenge, and we're trying to build a machine that can pick up a wooden cylinder and move it from one place to another. We have seventh and eighth graders that are actually learning hands-on, real world, what it takes to be part of a team and to learn about science, technology, engineering, math. The students come here prior to the competition. They learn about what is fluid power. They take that knowledge back with them and they have six weeks to build something that they're going to be able to complete the challenge with. Our team is building a structure that looks like a crane. It picks up the wooden cylinder and it clamps it down and it picks it up and it moves it back where it needs to be. The students come into this program not having any idea how this even relates to anything as far as their future is concerned. They leave this program not only with a better understanding of what fluid power is and how it works, but they also get to meet a lot of engineers and professionals in the industry that they can connect the dots and say that's sort of a job that I could potentially have someday. It shows the students how engineers work out in the real field. They have to work with teams, they have to work with deadlines, they have to work within constraints. There's a certain set of students that know they're going on to college, but you take programs like this, it gives other students an opportunity to say, hey, I can, I can have a career. I can be a plumber, I can be an electrician, I can be a tradesman. Not only that, I can be an entrepreneur, I can own my own company. Students with their teachers and industry advisors have been planning, researching, designing, building, testing, and then rebuilding their bots to be able to be ready for this competition. So this is finals. If you lose twice, you're out. I'm in charge of driving the robot. My role is uh, pit boss. The competition is actually pretty fierce. I was here last year also. And our bot's different from last year, but we believe we can do pretty good. Hopefully we can place in the top 10. We have eight girls on our team. We're the little ladybugs. I'm the captain. It teaches you a lot about teamwork. This is full contact innovation. This is that opportunity, which is also critical for the manufacturing process, of testing what you've built to see how that's going to withstand the unknown, which is the other bot. I just facilitate the program. There are days I sit back and, and watch them identify problems and come up with solutions. That's extremely rewarding for me as an educator. Our industry advisor is our second year with Duckmate Industries out of Monongahela, Pennsylvania. The kids do most of the work, but our industry advisors are there to just kind of guide them along the way. Some kids feel like if they're not going to go to college, they really don't know what they're going to do after high school. They don't fit, they don't have a place. Bots IQ gives them a place to learn that there are other opportunities to use their tech skills, their intelligence. This is the one sport that all the students can be involved with that they all can go pro if they want to. We have a heritage of making products in this city. We already have a lot of the kind of manufacturing culture here and kind of updating it. Pittsburgh is very big on robotics. Having the manufacturing close to you is actually much better than any savings that you would get outsourcing it. And startups, they have to be opportunistic. And when there is an, a reason to hire fast, then they need to know that there is a deep bench that they can pull into. The Made Right Here program is set up to help people who are 
underemployed get some training in manufacturing so that they can take on new jobs. Our first 250 trainees all came from the ranks of the unemployed. I'm Michael Bagley. I work at Boston Over Robotics as a senior robotics technician. It's really not a typical job. I got a lot of hands-on experience with CNC machining, metalwork, things that I've never done before, but I always wanted to do. How do you also make sure that people who make products are called professionals? Not just hobbyists and tinkerers, but people who want to earn a living. So I mix handmade methodologies and then I also use some high-tech methods in order to create my jewelry. As soon as I saw the water jet machine, that's whenever I decided like I can actually do some small batch manufacturing. Every day I have the opportunity to learn something new and really that's what I was looking for. I feel like now I am a part of the, the maker movement. This used to be a blue collar town and now you know Google's moving in and all this technology, but we're still missing those hands-on skills and we still need engineers and the teamwork is really what people are gonna be looking for in the future. That is what the maker movement and maker spaces have done and they have democratized the tools. They've opened the doors to everyone. Well, if I had been trying to do this 10 years ago, um, I probably would have failed. You saw the kids here today. They're excited. They've done this themselves. The look in their eyes when the light comes on. It shows them what people do in real life. Don't be afraid to do hands-on work. Don't be afraid to make things. Don't be afraid to create. If you do want to be a maker, you want to be paid to be a maker, you want to have your education paid for to be a maker, then manufacturing is a career path you should look at.